Bitcoin was another one. The rally doesn't seem to be ending anytime soon. The cryptocurrency hitting a high last night, surpassing $29,000. It is on pace now for its best year since 2017, surging by 300 percent. Will the Bitcoin boom continue into next year? Let's bring in Matthew Rozak. He's co-founder and chairman of Block. It's a blockchain technology company that provides infrastructure and innovation for cryptocurrency networks. So you are a bull, Matthew. I think you're expecting $1 million for Bitcoin by 2025. But, but here's my question. Why won't we see a repeat of 2017 where it ran up to the high of 20,000 and then collapsed the next year down to 3,000? Yeah, Bitcoin sometimes does that. I mean, it's been an explosive year for Bitcoin, up almost 4x um, in terms of price. But also importantly is the narrative that's surfacing on Bitcoin and the adoption and accessibility. And look, it's been the best performing asset over the last 10 years, and it's just getting started. Um, I, I think the key uh, piece for 2020 was the pandemic and the catalyst it created in terms of uh, folks looking for a shelter for inflation and seeing something that's uncorrelated. And so the intersection of all that has pointed to Bitcoin versus gold, and we're just getting started. Um, I think the adoption piece is a very important uh, narrative of 2020, where you have retail uh, platforms like Square, PayPal, Robinhood, which is super rich in a demographic of millennials. Uh, you have institutions, uh, City, Fidelity, and Mass Mutual. Mass Mutual has Bitcoin. That's an amazing thing. They had to go through a, 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 a crazy amount of regulatory scrutiny in order to do that. Uh, that is uh, like thought leadership level stuff. And it, it yeah. synthesized all that down and you have uh, a ton of demand for a fixed supply. There's only 900 Bitcoins that are mined on a daily basis. So those catalysts are, are kicking into gear and that's what, uh, what happened in 2020. I get the adoption and, and you laid out a number of key examples, which really legitimizes it, but you still can't really do anything with Bitcoin. You can't buy stuff with it. it it's not a real currency in that way. So, so when you say adoption, doesn't it have to get to the next level for what you're talking about? Uh, absolutely. And, and people try and put Bitcoin into a, a particular box. Uh, you know, is it a commodity? Is it um, uh, a currency and and you know sometimes people think of it as a platypus it does a lot of things and uh it, it it's kind of um an advanced form of money and and right now the use case the product market fit for bitcoin is store of value and the competitor for that is gold right now bitcoin's about five percent of gold's market cap uh but it's it's technology it's software it's infrastructure and it's a faster way of uh, utilizing uh store of value technology Matthew, is the biggest risk to it regulation? And, and do you think the massive and fast rise this year actually increases the risk of regulation as governments, of course, won't want to lose control of, of money supply? It's a great question. And I look at 2021 as the start of the roaring 20s for Bitcoin. It'll, it'll continue to compound on itself. And then you say, well, what could disrupt this party? And I think the regulatory dynamics could be uh, of consequence. Um, the... You look at what the U.S. needs to do, and, and this is not saying, oh, let's build a prescription for the CFTC, SEC, IRS, uh, uh, Treasury. This is more about a national strategy for the U.S. The U.S. needs to get behind this technology and get behind this system uh, in order to be competitive. And, and you're seeing uh, geographies like China, Singapore, uh, Switzerland having much clearer regulatory frameworks for the adoption of, uh, of this new technology. So I think that's that's going to continue to be a, a footnote to Bitcoin's story until that, that gets clarified. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.